Welcome back, everybody. Today's lesson. Uh, exercise your linear actuators on a regular basis. Or they might get stuck. Purchase this thing in bed up position and I detached this end so I could put the bed down. And when you try to operate this, you can see it's drawing power and trying but not succeeding. Now, uh, of course already tried beating this thing with a screwdriver and to that it was unresponsive. So I'll go ahead and remove the linear actuator. Already did the pin at that end. Now there's just a pin at this end, a cutter pin through a larger pin, and uh, the electrical connector I've already unplugged here. I'll cut this cable tie. So you can see here that the rod end turns freely. It screws in and out. Well, I'm going to have a look at the motor end. We'll just take these two bolts loose and see what we can see. Well, all right at this end, but not so much at that end. I'll just pry my way in there. Be careful about that seal, but uh. It, uh Looks like the seal is not doing such a great job, other than to hold water in here. Okay, there are the brushes, which are still here and still attached, but uh, this thing's totally full of water, so we'll put that aside and let it dry out. the outside with the magnets off of here and get to the bottom of this thing Let's see if I can get it turning now that needs a cleaning nope nope there's still water dripping out of the entire case here uh, I think it would be best to do a complete disassembly and cleaning and lubrication and reassembly So we've got these four Allen bolts here. Start with them. There it goes. And oh my, here comes more water. Yeah, this thing needs some attention. There's the last one of those. Where did that get us? Okay, there's that bit. Yep, good thing we got in here. That's not looking at all well. Oh, there we go. Clean the rusty gunk out of that end. Looks like I'll have to remove this large nut if I want to get to the rest of it. That's no good. But we can fix it. Alright, this end seems to turn smoothly, there's no play in it, I don't know what the bearing situation is in here, 
but it's smooth and this end doesn't have to spin very fast. So I'm going to leave that alone other than to clean. We'll have to clean all of this out of here. See this gear went on this pin here. Just slips off. No bearing to worry about there either. Clean all this up and measure the bearings on this motor. And get some new ones. There's that bearing. Looks just awful. Screw works great though. Looks like we've got a 22 millimeter. And an 8 millimeter shaft. And a 7 millimeter depth. Alright, I'm going to try to make a tool that will get a grip on that bearing without squeezing it tighter against the shaft. All right. All right, now let's just clean this up in the lathe a bit. All right, all that is disassembled and cleaned up. And it has had several days at this point to dry out. I need to repair uh, where the windings have been scraped a bit in this process. Where the insulation has come off of them. So I'll clean the debris out of here with, some, with the air compressor, uh, which has a dryer on it. And having masked off the middle of this with some super crappy aluminum foil, I'll just replace the missing enamel there. Yeah, I've got a nice new 8-pack of skate bearings here. But as you saw, the shaft measured slightly undersized. So these We'll press on by hand. They just fit tightly enough. There we go. And now I'll position the tricky end of this first. We've got to get 
the springs in here and the brushes in their holders. Like so. Now, enlist the help of a little springy clamp, hopefully. And there it is. And I believe this time, instead of that brittle failure of a gasket, I will use a bit of sealant. Being careful to use just the right amount, or just just slightly more, but so as not to make a mess. And I'll use a bit here where the wire grommet goes, and now attempt to neatly slide them together. Of course, we'll be fighting the magnets here a bit. Got to be careful to keep that seated at the back. And we're in. All right. Yeah, I've cleaned most of the grease and filth off of the gearbox here. Now let's clean the gasket surface with some brake cleaner. The uh, bit where the motor goes here has a rubber gasket in there. But I'll just add some sealant to that as I don't trust any of the seals here. There is a little notch here that lines up with a notch in there. I'll just slip that together. Press the bearing into its spot there. You can see the shaft spins freely now. Everything all lined up with the new bearings. Now we've got the gear on the motor. Which might need a gentle tap. Keeping that in place. Tappa, tappa, tappa. Re grease everything here. We still have the gasket to the gearbox, so I will use that, but with a little bit of sealant. And I'll slip that back on. Yeah, grease in the gasket. And we slip that back on. And begin installing bolts. And I'm also going to put a bit of sealant on the fasteners. Like so. I should clean those threads. All right, having cleaned and greased the threads and applied a bit of sealant to the head. And I, of course, tighten these gradually, alternating between the two. And they don't need to be very tight. Then on this tube here again we have a couple of O-rings 
that I will not trust. Given the circumstances. The other O-ring is already on here. Never came off. A little bit of sealant over top of this one. At the other end, I'll apply a bit of grease to the seal where the shaft comes through. And work that on there. There we go. And we can put in those four bolts. A bit of sealant where the lock nut goes. And with everything snugged up there, I can set up my benchtop power supply and see if it goes. Well, There it goes. All right. And it's of course just spinning now. Well, you can't even see that. It's just spinning now because the ends have to be pinned in place in order for the screw to operate. I have to stop this shaft from moving in the rotary direction. And of course, after checking and proper operation, you can take it all apart and do it again because you didn't pay attention to the orientation of this shaft because you thought you'd be able to do it later or something? I don't know. Anyway, goes like that in this case. Now, having reinstalled everything the correct way around, I can put this nut back on here. And then once again, set my benchtop power supply to 12 volts. And verify operation. Off it goes. Wonderful. Elevate. And lower. Now let's try it on the vehicle. Of course, I'll first want to scrape all the corrosion off of these contacts. And then I'll apply some of this grease for electrical things. And try to rub it in there as best I can. And don't forget to check out the rest of the videos on the channel as we do lots of different things around here. And if you like any of those things, please do subscribe. And then next time I'll get to the bottom of this screwy gear shift here. It has to be manipulated internally with a screwdriver to work across from one side to the other. And the uh, parking brake that doesn't work because it appears to have been driven with it on for quite some time. And then we'll do something about this front end business. I think I'll probably just build a new front body here that uh, gives better access to the workings. And uh, probably add some features to it as well. Good as new. Thanks for watching.